um, you know, all of this troubleshooting that I've gone through here in the past year, um, or even in the past, you know, six months, all this troubleshooting with the apnea and me realizing this is apnea so severe that my throat is closing, preventing sleep. All of this troubleshooting, all of this, me, you know, me having to research and learn about the anatomy of, of my jaw and mechanically what I can do and me literally building two different models of splints for my teeth here to try to move my jaw forward at night. That's insane when you've got an uneducated woman fighting for their life to this level, designing, you know, designing accurate models at home to use as medical devices. All of this troubleshooting should have been done by doctors. This was a failure of my healthcare system. This investigative work that I've done here, this all this troubleshooting should have happened years ago. With all the troubles, with all this struggling to sleep and everything, all of this should have been done by doctors, not by me. This is what we pay these people for. This is what we hire these people for to fight for our lives. And so now I, I developed this splint that's perfect and it, it actually is mechanically doing exactly what I designed it for, which is move the jaw right up to the, where, you know, move the bottom jaw forward up to the front teeth and lock that jaw in at night to open the airways. It has, the device I made is successful, but my airways are closing even with the jaw being moved forward as much as possible. So the apnea now I've determined is so severe that I need a tracheostomy. There are no nights where I can lay down and sleep for six or seven or eight hours. I sleep one or two or three hours only a night. And I can't go on like this. And I'm losing my mind and I'm lashing out and I'm screaming. And exactly like you would be if you were this sleep deprived. But my point is all of this should have been done by doctors. Even at this moment, they're trying to tell me that this is a mental health issue. I'm fighting for my life and I'm being pro patient profiled. How incredible that a person legitimately extremely ill has to view the healthcare system as a threat. This is so wrong. And I'm going to lose my, you know, you know how people are dying. Medication injured patients are dying, but also patients who just have, you know, gone through such uh, negligence to this degree that they're disabled and can't function anymore and extremely ill and they're fighting for their lives. I want to tell you how a bunch of us are losing our lives is because of all the loss accumulated by not being able to access qualified health care. All the loss, the jobs, the relationship loss, you know, monetarily and I'm on the verge of losing my home. I'm going to lose my home in uh, a week and a half. I'm going to be put out onto the street. I will not survive. I will have been completely destroyed by this healthcare system. Unless somebody steps in to literally rescue me and fight their asses off for me, I'm going to end up losing my life. I will not be hospitalized. It will not be driven driven into a nervous breakdown, like a mental and physical breakdown caused by this healthcare system. I won't allow that to happen. And I won't survive. If I'm tossed out onto the street, I will not survive. I I I I 
people are losing their lives, not just from the injuries and the loss. Well, not just from the injuries, but they can't withstand the loss. I can't lose my home at almost 60 years old. And everything else is gone. Everything else is gone because of of me not being able to access qualified health care. I've lost everything because I can't get qualified health care in Canada. And when I when my house is taken from me, I, I won't survive. I will have been completely destroyed by this health care system. And I am waiting for a miracle to happen. And it's not likely to happen. But that's all I've got left.